This parasha, parasha Tetzave, gives us a little hint of what I just said. But since the Torah was written by God, he doesn't need many words. So it says in the beginning of the parasha, Hashem talks to Moshe. He says, Vata, which is talking to Moshe. It's the first time that Moshe's name is not being mentioned. And why? And the reason why is because this is, Parashat is at the same time. It's read every at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu's birthday. And because Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, instead of killing Am Yisrael after they made Chet Egel, erase me out of, your, uh, out of your book. Instead of erasing them, erase me. Or if you're going to erase them, erase me. Hashem says, I'm not going to erase you, I'm not going to erase them. But, tiny little bit of what you said, I will fulfill. How? On your birthday, I'll erase your name from the Torah. On your birthday, parasha, you're not going to have your name in the Torah. But this is also one of the signs of humility that Moshe Rabbeinu had. And the reason why is because you never see Moshe complaining about it either. I wrote the Torah though. No, it's five books of Moses. Shouldn't I have my name in the Torah? No. Not a question, not a doubt, not a nothing, not a complaint. So it says, So it says, You shall command the children of Israel that they shall take for you clear olive oil. What's clear olive oil? The Chachamim say that oil is a sign for Am Yisrael. A sign for Am Yisrael, more than anything else. It's always a symbolic sign for Am Yisrael. First and foremost, we see that oil, if you mix it with any other liquid, it always floats to the top. It's always lighter and always floats to the top. Just like Am Yisrael, it doesn't matter how much they beat us up and they kill us and they pogroms and the Holocaust and Hashem Rechem and all the different things that have happened to us, we always come back. Why? Hashem promised. Hashem promised Am Yisrael, Am Zgula. Am Zgula meaning we're not subject to the rest of the world's nature. Hashem promised to keep us alive forever. So oil always floats to the top. The second thing is, is that we remain separated. If you mix oil with water, the oil will always separate itself from the water. Just like a Jew is supposed to. A Jew is not supposed to act like the Goyim. Not because he's racist. Not because he doesn't like the Goyim. It has nothing to do with that. It's because the Goy has a certain role in the world and the Jew has a certain role in the world. It's as simple as it gets. It has nothing to do with racism. Racism is based on mankind. Racism is based on your opinion. My opinion. Which are flawed. Why? Because our opinions change every week. Last week you like blue. This week you like black. Next week you're going to like red. And every week you're going to change your opinion. Last week you like steak. Next week you're a vegetarian. The week after that you only eat taref. And shema achem. People's opinions change all the time. Racism is based on opinion. What's your opinion of a certain race? Last week he liked the Indian people, and this week he doesn't like the Egyptian ones, and this week he doesn't like the Yemenite, or the Ashkenazi, or the Sephardi, or the this one, and that one. It's all shtuyot. It's mankind's opinion. The Torah doesn't have racism. The Torah has God's opinion. What's God's opinion? He says the Jew has a role in the world. The role of the, of the Jew is to be a light to the nations, meaning you have to lead by example. You have to fulfill the entire Torah and to show the world that by fulfilling the entire Torah, you're sanctifying Hashem's name. You're encouraging other people to also want to sanctify Hashem's name, either as a non-Jew or as a Jew. If they're already Jewish, then you're encouraged just by your behavior. You're encouraging them to stay connected to Hashem. If they're not Jewish, perhaps you're encouraging them to want to become Jewish and convert. So, but if you act like a goy, you have a problem. Why do you have a problem? Hashem says you not only are not serving your purpose, you're serving the opposite of the purpose. Your purpose would be to be a light to the nations. 
if you're not serving your purpose, then you just do nothing. You just be like a little golem. In the middle of nothing, doing nothing, you just care about yourself, you're in a room, you don't affect anyone, you don't talk to anyone, no one knows you exist, Bichlal, that's a golem. But when you go against Hashem, you violate Shabbat, you violate all the rules of the Torah, and nonetheless, you start uh, befriending all of the goyim. You want to go to the political parties, you want to spend a lot of time talking about politics, who's the president, who's the vice president, who's the treasury, who's the not treasury, who is the, you want to talk about all those things instead of divrei Torah. Hashem says you're not only not serving your purpose and being a light to the nations, you're doing the opposite. You're mixing with the goyim. And that creates such a problem. What kind of problem? If I told you that such a problem can create a holocaust, would you believe me? Well, it almost did. When? Purim. The story before the story was exactly that. Before Achashverosh took power, Cyrus was, the, uh, was a king and he decided, you know what? Let me be the leader that the prophet Isaiah talked about 200 years before and build a better Mikdash, even though he was a goy. Let me be the tool it actually said his name in the Torah. 200 years before he did, he decided, let's launch, let's start and build the Bet HaMikdash. So, Ami said, I'm going to build the Bet HaMikdash. What do you think? If somebody said right now, listen guys, Mashiach is here. The first Bet HaMikdash was destroyed. There's a Nevoah, there's a prophecy, there's going to be a second Bet HaMikdash. Okay, we're going to build it. We're starting now, which is to us, Mashiach arrived. Let's go. What do you think? All of Amisa should be getting on into the planes. El Al, Jet Blue, this blue, that blue. Every flight goes to Teretz Yisrael. Why? Bashiach is here. We've been waiting for 2,000 years. Rabotai Ayekarim, the reality was people didn't want to go. What do you mean they didn't want to go? Out of millions of Jews, millions of Jews around the world that heard the news that they're building the Bet HaMikdash, only 42,000 went to Eretz Yisrael. Why? The rest of them liked being among the, among the non-Jews. They liked their life. They liked eating pizza in Italy. They liked to uh, eat Chinese food in China. They liked talking politics at the White House. They liked it. They don't want to change. They want to stay in Egypt. What's the problem? Mashiach is here though. That's his problem. I think that if, in my opinion, if the Mashiach arrived today, I think it wouldn't be too different. Which is one of the reasons why we're obligated to learn Megillat Estel every year. It's not because the story changed. It's because we haven't learned it enough. If we did, Mashiach would already be here. In a good way. So now, 42,000 people show up. To prove the point further... Achashverosh takes leadership, stops the building of the Bet HaMikdash. Instead, he decides to have a celebration that the Bet HaMikdash is not being built. Why? Because there was a prophecy. They knew Torah. The Goyim knew Torah. They weren't uh, like today's Goyim who don't know anything. Today, or the Jews sometimes also. They knew Torah. They said, listen, their prophet Isaiah said, there's going to be a uh, new Bet HaMikdash. After seven years, according to his calculations, seven years have passed, even though technically it was only 62. He calculated seven years. Okay, the Bet HaMikdash was not built. Why? I stopped it, he said. I stopped the Bet HaMikdash from being built. So we should celebrate. That means that, I, that Hashem left Am Yisrael. If he left Am Yisrael, I have nothing to worry about. Let's celebrate. And in fact, let me invite a bunch of Jews to the party. Do you think that a bunch of Jews are going to show up to a party held by Hitler? No, right? But they did over here. How many of them? A bunch of them. Who? The rabbis. Mordechai is screaming at the door. No, no, it's Hitler. It's Hitler. And his brother and his sister, he hates you. He's celebrating that the Bitten Nash was not built. Okay, listen, for each their own. We have to be uh, nice. You know, we live in their country. We have to respect the law. We live in America. What? 
What? If he's the president, he's the president. So what? If it's the rule, what do you mean so what? It's against the Torah, you imbecile. It's against the Shem. Listen, Hashem understands. If he didn't understand, he wouldn't make it happen. They start rationalizing. Rationalizing their sins like people rationalize the behavior of the Goyim since then. If people knew as much about the Torah as, as they know about the economy, or they know about the White House and who's the president and who's not, or they know about sports and who gets what salary and who de get, doesn't get a salary, Mashiach would be here and everybody would be tzaddikim. The problem is we're spending too much time being like the Goyim, like we did in Purim 2,500 years ago. Many of them showed up, and because they showed up, they said, listen, we have to be nice. We, we're living here. And look how nice they are to us. They even served us kosher wine. Look, the White House is serving kosher food now. Obviously, they're, they're, they're welcoming us. They like us. Why are they serving kosher food? What's the problem? They, they welcome us. No. Rabotai Karim, the White House back then also served kosher food. And then Achashverosh, Yimach Shimo Vezichro, came out, came out with what? With the clothing that we learn about in this parashat Tetzaveh of the Kohen Gadol. Celebrating, look, the Bet HaMikdash is not being built. Why? I stopped it. I'm wearing the clothes of the Kohen Gadol to show you. It's finished. Just become Goyim. Give it up. Give it up. And what we do as fools, and I say we because it was us. It wasn't some stranger that lived 2,000 years ago. It's us. That's why we're still here. What do we do? Say, okay, the Chaim. Chaim. Chashverosh. Chaim. Haman. The Chaim. Hashem says, okay, you want to say the Chaim for not building the Mikdash? I'll give you the Chaim. So when we act like Goim and we play baseball and football and basketball and sports and White House and news and stock market and all the stuff that we're not supposed to be doing, it can bring a Holocaust. That's what this whole holiday is about. Now it also connects to this parasha. Why? Hashem says you want to be saved from this Holocaust. You want to be saved in the days of Mashiach that's going to be full of confusion. You're not going to know who's religious and who's not. Be a Shemin Zayt Zach. Not just a Shemin Zayt. Don't just be a Jew because your mom's a Jew. Don't just be a Jew because your grandfather's a rabbi. Be a Jew because you're clear. Clear of what? Clear of all of the Averot. Clear of all the Amalek that's in our mind that taints us to go and be a Goy. Be clear of all those things. Be a clean, kosher oil. Not a touch of Abu Dazara. Not on your wig and not in your behavior. Not on your money and not in your business. Shemen Zait Zach. Don't just be a Shemen. There's plenty of Shemens in the world. There's 8,000 of them. 8 uh, billion of them. Don't be Shemen Zait. There's 20 million of them. Be Shemen Zait Zach. Shemen Zait Zach. Without the shame, you'll have blessing. Honesty, Honesty helped, helped countless people get closer to Hashem, to Hashem. Because for the first time in their life, they hurt. They hurt. Honesty, Honesty that's brutal, but is effective. But is effective.